great to see everyone here in today's investing show. A lot of new, not some new people. Uh, so people we'll see around here, we got Jeff and Charlie, we got Tom, Chris, we got Brendan. Awesome guys, thanks for joining uh, here today. Uh, Megan's going to be out uh, for today's session. Of course, my name is Scott Royal Smith. I'm the owner of Royal Legal Solutions. And today we're going to be talking through a new offering um, that we have as a new division here in Royal Legal Solutions, which is our Royal Insurance. Um, so what we've done is in our effort to be able to create a truly one-stop shop for real estate investors. As you guys know, we've already in-house all of the asset protection um, and the estate planning. Um, we have an in-house uh, CPA and MBA and a CFO uh, to be able to cover off on any of the financial or tax pieces for uh, streamlining your taxes, improving your tax rates, as well as making sure that your investments are performing um, optimally uh, to increase your total cash flow, which is how you increase your speed to financial freedom. Uh, and then today we're adding um, and announcing for you guys, <laughs> I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit um, about our new Royal Insurance Division um, that will be able to offer holistic, integrated, and efficient insurance solutions uh, specifically tailored for real estate investors. And we've actually developed this because of the feedback that we've gotten from uh, you all. Hey, Julie, great to see you uh, popping on video. Always great to see your face. So what we have is um, uh, been, of course, meeting with uh, investors over the, all of the years, right? And one of the things that we always hear about, which is, hey, well, you know, I put together my asset protection pieces and now what do I need to do with my insurances? Uh, for all my insurances that I need to have. What do, you, what do I need for my property insurance? Do I need like an umbrella policy? Should I be thinking about life insurance policies to take care of my family um, and make sure that, you know, everything and all my end of life stuff is taken care of appropriately there. Um, and also like what types of investment opportunities are available through insurance. So if you guys have heard of like whole overfunded whole life insurance policies, when you're in that higher net worth range, that kind of stuff can start to make a lot of sense. Um, and so what we're able to do by in-housing Royal Insurance um, as a new division underneath Royal Legal Solutions and have that as part of our one-stop shop, um, Whereas I think Aaron Porter just jumped in and he's on screen here. He is our insurance uh, insurance guy. Um, he also has partnered with a, a number of um, super high powered uh, uh, insurance uh, directors. One of them actually being his brother um, into it as well, too. That's also part of uh, that uh, insurance division uh, of Royal Legal Solutions. So have a strong team of really experienced people in the insurance game. And then what we've done is, we said, great, well, let's, let's position these insurance offerings to make sure that they're exactly what real estate investors need, right? So we can cater specifically to the real estate investor market and the small business owner market um, because it's the majority of our clients. So um, unlike any other insurance uh, company or agency that you'd work with before, uh, we just specialize in that niche and that's all we uh, plan on serving. Um, and our plan is to go deep into that niche instead of wide. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's go ahead and talk through just like a little bit of the basics of like where does insurance fit um, into like our protection models um, that we have here. So you guys can see here, um, seeing my document camera, start trying to diagram some of this stuff out for you. So the first thing uh, we typically think about as real estate investors is what? You got to buy deals, right? You say, great, every seminar that you ever went to always said, what do you need to do? You need to get out there. You need to buy some deals, find those properties, lock them down, right? And said, great, I'm going to go out there and buy deals. Now what? <laughs> I bought deals. And that's usually where the education stopped was at this buy deal part of the training. And that's where we're picking up here with, with our last covers off on everything else that happens after that point. So after you buy a deal, you probably heard from maybe your CPAs or other investor buddies or whatever is, hey, just have insurance. And you're going to have some of that insurance that's going to be like bank required, which is going to be like, that's that property insurance, right? This is going to be like your fire, flood, et cetera. Yeah. This insurance that you buy here how many people think that that insurance is to protect you? Because it ain't. That insurance is there to protect the bank. That's why the bank requires it. Because they say, great, this insurance policy now will go out and pay if something happens to this property with it, right? 
We also know that the bank, this is for the bank's protection from an accident that could occur on the property. But we also know the bank is also uh, there because they have a security interest in the property because they have the loan, right? So the bank is double covered here. It says, asset burns down, I get paid. Asset doesn't get paid, uh, paid on, I get to take it from a foreclosure action. So the bank's position here is pretty secure, although something horrible might happen to you, right? You could go bankrupt, but the bank is gonna be fine with these minimal protections. So what's that next level of protection? looking like on the insurance front. The next level of protection you're gonna have there is gonna be umbrella insurance policies. And that these types of policies help cover off again, other accidents. So let's say that you have your auto policy, your auto policy is too low. So I think here in Utah, the minimum for your auto policy is $12,000 a year, right? That, I mean, that's your, the state required minimums. Now what happens is, what happens if the claim, $12,000 minimum, but how, who thinks that how often this is actually gonna be the total extent of the damages for medical bills and for our, the repair of the car and all of the other passengers that might be in that other car you hit or that your son hit while he was out driving around and goofing around, this ain't gonna cut it, right? So I'll say, well, I could either try to figure out what are all of the individual risks that I might have from like auto policies or other things that could come up in my life, right? That could cause injury. Or what I can do is I'll just buy one umbrella policy and it's gonna have a broad spectrum of coverage. So why we like this is this is, you know, this gives us broad coverage of what is the gap? So maybe I can take a low auto policy limit and then I'm gonna say, cool, but I'm gonna stack that with an umbrella policy here. So that way, anything that comes up in life that insurance will protect it will that the insurance can protect it will protect let's let me get off on just one last point here and then we'll open up the floor then to talk about the insurance perfect um so as we come in here with our insurance uh, insurance coverage here this is like our broad uh, our broad insurance coverage and that the one limitation that we have here for insurance so the limitation is this is just about accidents right and low dollar claims why low dollar claims? Because insurance companies will pay out on low dollar claims. They almost always try to fight anything that's a high dollar claim, right? And then limitations on accidents, meaning like stuff like this, right? Where it's like, hey, we had um, $12,000 of coverage, but also it's limitations on just accidents. So if there's ever a lawsuit against you based upon like a rental agreement or a lease agreement, per, uh, pro property purchase contract um, that you wanted to get out of, an email or text message that you sent that somebody says that you misled them. By the way, if they ever lose money, they'll say that you lied to them. It doesn't matter how honest you are. They'll always just lie. That's what you do in litigation. You get onto the stand and you lie like hell to be able to try to win. Um, at least that's what everybody seems to do in that circumstance. And so we can see here that we're, there's these are our most efficient these, are the, these solutions are the most efficient ways to cover off of most all of the risk, most all of the time. Those are gonna be what your insurance policies cover. And then you know, as a Royal Legal Solutions customer, or member, that we, then we say, great, if you want bulletproof protection, this is where you have to start doing asset protection. So this is where you do like LLCs, DSTs, anonymous trusts, et cetera. So this is gets you to that 90%. You want to close that last 10% from the unlimited liability that can occur. This is where you're going to jump into the asset protection piece of it. Okay, Chris, I know you're dying to ask a question. I just want to get that out so we can get the full game plan of all of the thinking. Um, that goes Dude, on. I am just dying here. Dying. Yeah, tell me what's up, bro. No, no, no. I, I, I actually am one of the weird people who actually enjoy watching this kind of stuff. So um, I guess one of the rubs that I have with umbrella policies is that, you know, I've got a large one that covers, you know, myself, but, uh, you know, I've got multiple entities and, uh, you know, it's like each entity has to get its own umbrella policy, uh, unless somebody could tell me different. That's just what I'm bumping into. And it's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, is that something you guys are addressing where somebody could get in a sense, one large umbrella policy and it, you know, you just list the properties maybe that uh that you're involved in and, and have it all under that or do should i are you still gonna spread it out among uh, one person needs to get like 
four or five, you know, we'll have however many entities they have, they got to get in different individual policies. Um, For so the umbrella specifically. Yeah, so I think the answer I'm going to give to this is always going to be that um, it's going to be on a case by case basis of what's going to be appropriate for each individual, as you can anticipate, right? Enter, right? So I'd say, let's get into a conversation about what's going to be appropriate to your situation. Mm -hmm. Now, what I can tell you is that there are um, one is uh, I don't know if Aaron would have the answer to that question off the top of his head around how, how, um, what type, whether we could add additional insureds to a single umbrella policy that might be a research item um, to have to pull in to say, hey, listen, can I take one umbrella policy in my name and then add all of my subsidiary companies? Etc. as an additional insured to an existing umbrella policy. Um, might well, be almost ideally, Scott, would be something where, I mean, I, obviously each property has to have its own insurance. I may have different partners, it's different states. Those I don't have a problem with. And, and, and even the umbrella policy would only, well, I guess that's with any umbrella policy, it only comes into effect if the underneath policy, you know, if it goes beyond that. But I don't even necessarily need to have those it's only if it comes to me, you know, if it breaks through the LLC or if it breaks through that initial barrier of, of insurance that I'd want that to come up. Um, yeah. So that's why I thought maybe if it just covered me, but it is complicated by the fact, like I might own this house by myself, another one with one partner and a different one with two different partners is, is I, I'm just finding it obnoxious of, uh, you know, some partners may or may not want to pay for an umbrella policy or frankly don't have as many assets as I do and have different needs. Um, so if I could have just one policy that covers me, you know, as a, I don't know, just a, a last minute, uh, you know, problem, you know, coverage, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I think we, that's where we start getting into like some of the complications that you said, Chris, where it's like, Hey, it's different partners getting into it. But I would say at a high level, the really simple, easily repeatable way that I see people using these policies is that the umbrella policies apply to their personal liability. And because that's going to be like this stuff, right? My auto policy, that's going to bleed over because that's personal liability as it comes to me, right? Yeah. And that when I'm looking at my, um, what I typically see is then that for uh, anything that's going to be the real estate, real estate, what I'm actually looking at here is that that's my actual my property insurance. So my property insurance is going to cover me against anything that's going to be accidents relating to the real estate itself. That's going to be like grandma slipped and fell on the stairs, right? Something like mm -hmm. that. And says, that's how I protect uh, my individual real estate. And then if I want to protect my business, like, uh, and if I have like a separate business income, then that's going to be my gen, gen, general liability policy, um, key man policies, you know, um, you know, uh, other stuff like that be like disability, right? If I get hurt, you know, how right. sure that my business income still stay supported. Those are, I understand the buckets. Aaron, do you understand um, from the question about like umbrella policies? Is this, um, is that like an issue for you to research and then get back to us on like how umbrella policies can be added or not added as additional insureds, either like active businesses or directly tied to um, real estate? Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely because, because you're right on that border of being like in need of a commercial policy as to just staying in that personal space. And so every one of them is going to be a case by case basis. It's about it's about where is the insurable interest, and so you almost need to go into a commercial policy because these private these personal policies are not set up. They're they're kind of just like this. They're kind of like this package thing, right? And so it it. Uh, no, I, I hear you because I have my auto and my uh, umbrella and my home. Well, actually, right. I wanted it all in one place. It used to be all in one place, but now that's, you know, with the kind of home I got, uh, well, it was easier, it's smarter to split it up. But you're right, it's right. just totally different uh, as opposed to commercial. Uh, but yeah. even just within the commercial space, um, I've got, you know, potentially yeah. multiple umbrellas because of different entities and different partners, different states. Right, and that's that's the other issue is, is you run into, yes, I own all of these entities, but because of like indemnity and maintaining your anonymous stature in those each one almost needs to have its own policy because otherwise when they go somebody were to come after you and sue you they'd be like well they're all covered under this one policy so we can go after everything that he's got right got it yeah and i mean insurance is 
Well, let's, let's just go ahead and talk through like a little bit of what that process looks like, Chris, um, because this will, the process will apply to you as it apply to like everybody else, right? Because I think what we saw here at the end of this question of this discussion, this is what I picked up. This is actually a ton of moving parts, right? And how to get all those moving parts together, coordinated in a way that you're not going to have uh, policies that are going to basically protect you where you don't need it because it's already covered off on something else, right? That's a way that you can overspend on insurance is because you actually have too much um, in place. Um, and then it's also making sure that all of the key areas at least have like the minimum types of policies in place. So you don't end up with a gap and some hole, right? Because any type of like insurance hole means that you're really losing out on this, which is the really cost effective ways to cover off on your risk. Because insurance is always going to be the most cost effective way to cover off on risk. The alternative to insurance is lawyers fees and asset protection which is always more expensive than insurance, but unfortunately it's the only way to get to being bulletproof onto it is add them together, okay? So <clears throat> when we look at like, how does this work for us? What we always say is like, okay, great. What was the old way of doing this? Well, the old way of being able to cover off on your insurance, right? Is that you would just go to somebody who is like general, right? This is gonna be like State Farm Commercial, you say like, oh, cool. I'm just going to, I saw that number on state on the commercial there. I'm going to call up state farm and I'm just going to see what they do to me or do, do for me rather into it. Then the other way that you could go with this is like, well, who's local, who's in my community, who do they use? That'd be another way to be able to vet it. You go to your meetup group and say, well, who are you guys using for your insurance? And I was like, oh, I use Bob down the street. He's great about like what he does with it. Right. Um, and and typically what I found is, um, or you could say like, who do I find online, right? And then when you look online, what you're relying on is a star basis typically, right? How many stars do they got? They got good stars. They got good reviews. All right, well, I'll give them a call. I'll give them a shot, right? <clears throat> uh, this has some like detractors, right? It's because are they real estate specific? Providers, like how well they understand the needs of a real estate. Are they business providers? And then if they are, how well do they know how these two work together? So I end up with gaps. Even if I do this old way of doing it, I still end up with huge gaps on how well do they really understand all the things that I really need? Or am I going to have to research on my own and then come to this person and tell them this is what I think I'm needing? Are they reactive to whatever I'm asking them for? Or are they proactive in telling me like, listen, we understand the models of the business you're running. And then we can recommend to you um, integrated strategies that are, that are broader to you. So the new way of doing this is going to be real estate and small business specific provider. So it's finding the agent, um, this is gonna be the agent or the broker who's gonna say, listen, I just serve people that are in this, these camps, right? I'm not looking to do anybody else besides people who are in this camps. I'm not trying to grab auto policies from Bob down the street. I'm just helping people that have these types of business objectives and looking at what are gonna be all the solutions that's appropriate for them. They have to be specific to real estate and small business to be effective for you. Otherwise, it's too watered down. Their knowledge level of like what's really needed here is gonna be too watered down to be able to really get deep into the details of finding those efficient solutions. Um, then with the new way of doing this is high availability as well. Why? Because real estate and business, right, is high change. Filing and selling assets, your risk pro profile can change depending upon like what properties you got into and then what be, might be going on inside of your business is also always changing. So you need a relationship with somebody who is going to be available, right? To be able to talk to you and adjust your policies uh, and be able to do the way that's really efficient because I don't know about you guys, but I don't love talking about insurance. I don't want to spend more than an hour on it a quarter and talking about what are the proper insurance policies that I need to have in place and are there any adjustments? So if you're a Royal Legal Solutions member, you know that's part of your peace of mind program as you have these unlimited contacts with our staff to be able to cover off on those issues as you need to. 
<clears throat> the other piece here is you're going to say uh, what is a scope scope of providers. So the way that these businesses work is that when you have like an agent or a broker, there's people that are like here, like we had here that was for our, our state farm example. Oh, that was right here. So here for our state farm example, all they are able to do is go to state farm and say, hey, state farm, what do you offer? That's one provider that they're able to go to to be able to help shop on the price for you. And what they will do is they'll try to use whatever relationship they have to you to be able to make you fit inside of State Farm's model, right? The new way of doing this is to incorporate as many providers as you can. So here we're thinking that you need 50 plus providers to really be able to get the scope that, of the things that Chris was talking about of what's my flexibility of all of the things that I have going on. Um, can you find providers that are gonna have the most aggressive or most advantageous policy for me for all those different areas? So great. So you need actually a huge list of providers to make sure you can cover off on those issues um, for this type of client. And because all the things that can go on to that client and you need enough providers to make sure that it's gonna be the cost efficient solution for you. So you're looking for people that have over 50 plus providers that they can get to. Um, any other thoughts before we go into like what we're offering and how um, I've designed this uh, Royal Insurance here with Aaron, um, any other thoughts here on the old way versus the new way in terms of this is how we understand the existing challenges that real estate investors and small business owners have that are inside of our community and what we understand of like what a better model would look like. What is the newer way of how the model would look like? Jeff, go ahead. I got to see your hands up, bud. Yeah, I'm... Uh... One of the reasons probably folks like Chris and I or whomever might end up having like multiple insurance agents is that, you know, have these assets in different states. So, you know, we were, yesterday we were talking about uh, taxes and we, I mentioned I have a condo in Hawaii. Well, I went to my existing insurance company uh, and they're like, yeah, we're not licensed to do insurance in Hawaii. So you start having assets in, in California and Washington and Hawaii and you end up just you know, with a spider's web of insurance relationships. So besides being able to represent multiple companies, which is awesome, uh, you gotta be licensed in the different states too. So you're looking for um, nationwide insurance providers and then nationwide licensing. Yep. Because what I'm really looking for here is single point of contact. Yeah, exactly. Like, so I think I found the threshold for getting the owner of my local insurance guy who I have my home and, and everything under uh, when uh, we're spending like $25,000 a year on insurance now because the apartments up in the Seattle area is about $15,000 a year, our home and everything and our car is about five. And so all of a sudden, like I'm talking to the person about it and it's like, okay, that's the threshold. Okay. But Still like, okay, we have a single family rental property in Texas. Do you guys do that? No, we can't do that. Oh, we have a new condo in Hawaii. Can you do that? No, we can't do that. So yeah, like now I've got, I've got, well, we sold the place in Texas, but like, you know, regardless, you're, you've got four relationships because the insurance companies don't cover, you know, Texas, they don't cover Texas, they don't cover Hawaii, why is a special case, I guess, and, and and so besides the nationwide coverage, because even as you might end up with three or four different insurance companies, you know, I'm happy, I don't know, nationwide here, travelers there, state farm there, whatever it is, somebody who can be a broker and, and support insurance with different companies, whatever the best coverage is for that asset, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's that nationwide coverage. It's, it's not having to have like four or five different people you have to call. Cool. Um, so really it's, I need who can, who actually has like the insurance product, but then also like, I need to make sure that the agents that I'm dealing with that can also be, uh, is can sell me into all these different products or set up these different products for me. And that I'd love it if it's a single point of contact. So I only have one person I ever have to talk to, and then they're going to go figure out on the back end how it needs to work. And I just, and like really at the end of the day, it's like, I just don't want to deal with it. I have to stay organized. Yep. That level of it for my insurance. Yep. Right. Yep. Cool. Um, go ahead, Aaron. I saw you like raise your hand, bud. Um, do you, you want to chime in on something with here or should we go to Chris? Well, yeah, I was just going to say really quick. The, so that's one of the biggest things is the multi-state, right? And so your local guys, it costs money for them to be 
able to be licensed in other states, right? And then you also have like different legality state to state. Um, I don't know how much Scott wants to get into it right now with with what we're doing. It currently we're licensed in like- Let, let's, let's wait until we get all of the other pieces up from yeah. Chris and Jeff and everybody else. Cause yeah. that's how we get old way and the new way. And then we'll be able to know exactly what points to talk to about what's gonna be important for this group. Uh, around uh, around insurance, Aaron. But great, great thinking. I love the enthusiasm. And to, as, Gary, as you can tell, Aaron's a go-getter. He's like so stoked on being able to help people with insurance more than anybody else I've ever met in my life, you know, into it. So, and he's a longtime business owner, Aaron, as he actually owned a, uh, like a car, multiple like car repair, like facilities, like from his family, like different types of like pawn shops and all kinds of like other businesses. Um, into it. And so what we've done is just take that high. What, what, I, what I've done with Aaron is like, I identified him as like, Hey, he's extremely high level executor, a very professional uh, business builder, entrepreneur type. And then we have deep connections into, um, and of course his own experience and his family with insurance for so long, but also like deep coaching and, and other uh, professionals brought into that to be able to create this super unique offering. Um, but in case, I uh, just want to make sure to touch on that so everybody has a feel for Aaron's background of, of who we're doing business with here together. Um, Chris, go ahead and shoot that. And what do you got, bud? Hey, um, well, just a few quick questions about, I, I'm, I'm making assumptions. This is not just for rentals, but it's for fix and flips as well. Is that correct? Yeah, my understanding is that we don't have any limitations on what we can offer um, okay. or, or where we can offer it. So we have... Um, we can get in that here like in a minute about like how how we're able to do that um, and what's different about why we're able, what, why and how. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Next piece. Okay. Okay. So yeah, my follow up to that, and you can either answer this now or later, is that uh, you, you look, no matter how much you try, very often at these fix and flips, you, you have just have some sellers that, you know, it's, you'll lose a deal if you don't get it quick. Uh, and it doesn't matter how efficient you are, there are times when I need insurance. And I need it, you know, within 24 hours. Uh, now, look, if you're just establishing a relationship with somebody, I, I get it. You know, you're going to need a little more time. But if you guys can get in the process where, you know, you're fixing flippers out there, you know, some of us who do 20, 30 properties at a time, you know, we've established a relationship with you. If you can make it where it's really quick. I mean, if I have to fax a request or if I got to call somebody or if I got to even email somebody, that, that's usually not the best. What the best that I've seen out there is where they have some online form. I just fill it out real quick with the specifics and I usually get an email or something that I get a declaration page within less than 24 hours. If, if that is something you guys provide, I, I think that's going to be a lot more competitive. Um, if you guys even offer month to month uh, rather than six months at a time payments, that's going to be competitive. Um, but really how fast you can do it uh, and, you know, uh, and having online requests, uh, and month to month, those, those are huge things. Um, one last thing that's kind of with the rentals that, uh, I don't know if you're going to discuss or not, maybe this is case by case basis, but I've been considering, uh, going to, um, liability only with some of my rental properties. And the thought process goes like this, you know, if you've got, a hundred rental properties that are not next to each other and they're all over the city, you know, you end up paying more in insurance sometimes annually than if one house burnt down a year. So, uh, you know, if it's, you know, like if, it's all, if they're all connected and there's a big fire, there's a big storm, I guess you could argue you could have multiple and that would not work. But um, I don't know if that's something that people do, but uh, it, it sounded more attractive to me considering it's pretty darn rare that a house burns down, even though I just had one last week, but. <laughs> oh man. Well, so it sounds like we got a couple of issues here too. So what I, I, what I hear from you, Chris, is that what I'd really like to do is have an established relationship um, where then I can just go on online, submit through like a form uh, through your online portal. And that within 24 hours, I get a deck page and that we're not sure about like how it could work on the policy side, but like something that would allow us to do like a month to month, uh, with these policies is more attractive to me than having to do more cash up front because it doesn't hit my cash flows as bad. Yeah. Right. Now, ACH payments I mean, is the only way that you guys could feasibly make that work because you're not going to wait for a check every month. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. So you could have some parameters around that. But um, I could talk further about that later if, 
if you need to, only because uh, I have experience I with. I'm going to bet that you and Aaron are going to have a great conversation and that me you and Aaron should have a great conversation about like what some of your vision is around that of like how the business would need to be, um, what intention we could, I don't know what things we're going to be able to necessarily do until we, uh, on these issues as it sits, uh, for like payment stuff in line until we actually get a little bit more research onto it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always love is let's set an intention for like, where is that business heading towards of what we know would be the optimal solution and say like, cool, how can we make progress towards that intention? So maybe we don't have to be perfect from the start. We can just start, but knowing where we're building to into it. Does that makes sense. Yep. Um, and then I hear you too about the liability only with some properties and cost of insurance versus cost of loss. And so this issue is actually a separate issue that's more advanced that we should cover off in that meeting and start talking about like insurance captives or like other things that we can do in that vein into it. What we might find that insurance captive is actually a great option for us to pull together insurances as a community and to be able to overall reduce all of our insurance rates um, in aggregate. Um, so we'll have to see what options exist for us here, but this is the easy piece. The insurance captain and stuff like that starts to get much more complex and more difficult to do. But um, these this, this piece here is much more accomplishable in the short term. Uh, for us, but I'm all I'm all about let's brainstorm big vision, set intentions, and then say, cool, how can we track to it month over month? Um, so we talked about here, guys, is some of like the new ways. Uh, so we have some like different um, SLAs we talked about inside of like new ways that like insurance companies uh, should work. And so this is what we're doing inside of. Um, I'll share with you some of what we're doing and some of the intentions that we have for um, so for Royal Insurance. So Royal Insurance, what we're seeking to create here is the, is the part of the RLS one-stop shop. And in that theme, we're looking to create dedicated point of contact, dedicated point of contact here with Aaron Porter as the principal of the insurance. Now, as this scales, right, we know how that's gonna work, right? Aaron's going to bring in somebody else that's awesome that everybody loves. We're going to train the heck out of that person into the systems and processes and make sure that continues to run smooth. And that just like we do with Royal Legal Solutions, everybody who's a member of the Royal Insurance always has direct contact to Aaron, but they know that let's just call him Bob, that Bob would eventually be doing the day to day. Right, because eventually what we want Aaron to be doing is scouting out, hey, what other options do we have for us that's going to overall make our insurances more efficient. Right. And we want Bob to be able to make those 24 hour turnaround times on the SLAs and grabbing the forms off of the website and making sure that that's happening for everybody. Um, so we also are going part of like in the process here, too, is a dedicated insurance page. Uh, on RLS website. With a contact form and a quote form. So this is where I think that part of what you were talking about, Chris, it's probably here, like con new contact form with us would be like, who's interested in talking to us? And that quote form is this thing would lead to a deck page being sent for like established relationships or otherwise, right? Something in here where it's like, we'll capture the information. We already have that technology with HubSpot. We can do that and push that out. Um, for our, so now we have, um, this is the scope of what the touch and feel is and the intention. This is our intention and touch and feel. Um, or we could call this like in a service level agreement of how we're looking at what that service level is going to look like. And then here's, this is where we look at like our providership. So what we have uh, negotiated out currently, this is our current scope of offerings. Um, we have 68 carriers. We have 68 direct to carrier relationships. So this is 68 direct, direct, 68, uh, direct to carrier relationships. Um, we have 63 um, relationships for life. This is 63 direct relationships on like liability any type of liability policy, 63 for life, and then 36 uh, carriers for like annuities or other types of insurance investments. So 
So when you're looking at what is going to be like the scope of my liability policies, we're going to be able to run that through 68 different carriers. When you're looking at, hey, when I'm looking at my life insurance, my overfunded whole life, my infinite banking, what any of those things are, we're going to be able to price that out against 63 competitors. And then if we're looking at, hey, what are those insurance related products that I might want to look at um, or be introduced to, um, that's going to be 36 related products as you come to it. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the majority of what everybody's going to offer here ain't going to be for us. There's going to be a sliver of like what actually comes out to be the, the pieces that are going to be most useful for us to us most of the time. The reason that we push so many carriers in is so that way we can always be, um, we're going to be always the most cost efficient. And most diverse. and most holistic. So the idea is, is that with we have a single relationship here with Aaron, Aaron meets with you, then we say, great, we learn about what the insurance needs are that we wanna investigate. We'll run that through all the different carriers because we have so much competition, how quickly that we can run this by the carriers. It's much faster than you'd ever be able to do on your own because of our relationships that are direct carrier. You would actually have to do these individual phone calls with individual agents to be able to scout out which one of these carrier options are. So that's how we can have the most cost efficient solution for you. Um, also the most um, you know, time efficient as well as we just covered. We also get the most diverse types of coverage because some types of coverage that they might offer in one carrier might be different on another. So as your business changes or as your needs might change that this will allow us the most flexibility to know, great, what's gonna be that new best policy for that new situation Aaron figures that out onto what carrier that's going to go into and then be able to, to slot you into the right place. And then it's also the most holistic because we're working not with on just one area of your life, right? We're able to help you with uh, any, any type of policy that you have, whether that's going to be your property insurance, your umbrella policies, your life policies, et cetera. So that, learns, so that way your, your, you know, your life policies, your property, your umbrella, any other policies you have work underneath like one system of coverages so we have and who's who quarterbacks at all who makes sure that it's all right who makes sure it's all more efficient it's in one person's brain so that takes your brain out of the equation right you just have to come in clearly with what are the scope of here's what i'm doing here's the and we form you so your responsibilities are scope of business our responsibility is best practices. So you come in to this meeting with Aaron. You say, hey, this is everything I got going on. And we're going to come back to you with is this is what best practices look like for somebody in your situation. And then let's talk what that costs. And then you'll get to here's the decision or partial decision. Either I want to implement all of that or I want to implement some of it. If I'm only going to implement some of it, what is the most important stuff for me to implement so I can know where to prioritize my budget? Um, we're going to do all of this through also initially, just for right now, as I'm uh, hand in hand on everything here. We're just going to send everything to scott at royallegalsolutions.com if you want to get into a meeting with Aaron. And then I'm going to work on setting up those meetings with the internal team here to make sure that we can get all coordinated. And then I'll be in those meetings with you guys. Um, so that way we can dial in all, all of the additional needs, concerns, et cetera, uh, that we might have. Um, as we continue to start get more defined on like, hey, what is the intention? Where, where, is the, where is the absolute best offering, the absolute best service that we can give for our community as it relates to insurance? So I think Liz dropped it there in the chat as well too. If you guys wanna shoot an email off to me, then we can uh, get the team to organize those meetings up. Cool. Um, we've got about 15 minutes left guys for questions. Questions, comments, concerns, like how are we feeling about this kind of stuff? Did we, did we miss the mark? on like, here's what we think people need and developing the system where it currently sits or does it, does it feel like we're on track and like, man, this is a super exciting offer. I can't wait to talk to Scott and Aaron about the insurance stuff so I can just pass on those, off those concerns to them. Where are we at with this kind of, with this? Oh, I, I love it. I, I really do. But uh, if I'm gonna be bluntly honest, it's all about the follow through and, and um, you know how that all comes together. Uh, but uh, I love everything that you said. <laughs> That's always going to be there, right? Until it actually happens to you, then until you actually get it done, then uh, 
because what good is a good idea if it doesn't get executed, right? So the plan is there, Chris, is that's also really important to me. What I know about new things is that uh, the two things happen. One is that they're new. So like it's new and it's like a figuring out process of how it goes on. Uh, two is you need uh, customers to work with here that are going to work with you, like providing really good feedback of like, here's what you need to be doing better, right? And that what we're able to offer in return is a promise that we're only going to take on a small number of clients. So you're going to have really high connectivity and touch points. And that if you are in the uh, one of the existing founding members that are working with us on the insurance, that's also how you can make sure that we build something that's going to serve you most, right? Because we're going to tailor it to the people. Well, who, who can I tailor the business to? I can tailor the business to the people that are talking to me because those are the people that want my help, right? So you're the ones that I'm going to be dialing in on. Here's how we're going to position this. And what we're able to do in sort of scaling into the insurance and being able to make sure they're always the most competitive is because it's part of the Royal Legal Solution system. Now it's backed by the, the entire balance sheet deal flow and uh, support teams that happen inside of Royal Legal Solutions, which is a team of already 40 people. So instead of thinking of this as like, oh, this is a startup insurance company, it's like, no, no, no. This is a, a small, this is a wing that we're developing the foundations for that's already part of this massive flywheel right? That you're going to be able to get personalized contact with and high levels of touch points, high levels of connectivity and with the team, um, but know that there's this entire support system that goes on uh, behind it. So it's not like you're working with some startup agent down the street. I get it. Uh, one follow up, a point of clarification too. Uh, is this just for commercial stuff or are you saying that maybe even me personally? Uh, you can personal, get my, okay. residential, personal, residential, personal, business and commercial. Just like what you guys already do. So, That's okay, do. that makes sense. Say we want to create the one-stop shop for insurance, just like we have the one-stop shop for everything else. It's Auto cool. too? I mean, for personal? I mean... Yeah, we, I think I think that's a, a possible for us to extend into. We would, we would need to look at... Um, <clears throat> I think that's actually part of the existing carriers, isn't it, Aaron? Did we talk about doing auto as well? Can you fill in, Chris, on that? Because I believe there was a discussion on saying, like, is auto worth offering because there's not very much margin in auto? But I think what we decided on saying is, like, we would rather be able to in-house everything to really get to, like, we only want you to have to talk to us. And then, like, you don't have to worry to talk to anybody else. So, Aaron, where do, where do we land on that currently? So, currently, um, the only thing that we don't have... Um, we're not set up to run um, is health insurance. Um, I oh, that would be killer. Yeah, I, oh. currently I can do everything else. Um, it's just about it's just about time management, right? If you get too diverse, then you're like spread too thin, right? And so, it's, where are we going to be able to help My everybody the too, most? Was that with like the health insurance? There's actually no um, there's no better deal. That we can no. offer health insurance. It's a any provider you go to will all have all access to the same deals because it's controlled by the marketplace of, of what insurances are. What we do that's different with being able to have like the 68 direct to carrier providers and all the other insurance is that it actually gives us a market edge about being able to find what are the most efficient carriers, right? That other agents would be able to do because everybody can go to the marketplace for the health insurance. I'd love to be able to offer it because you know eventually. Right. Uh, Cause I'd love to be able to be like, Hey, don't worry about anything. We'll handle the stuff for your employees. We'll handle your personal stuff, like whatever you might be able to have. Um, yeah. Or, or even something where you combine, you know, a whole bunch of entrepreneurs together and you're able to attract a bigger company and, and take, uh, you know, maybe potentially get a better deal too, because all of us or most of us are individual entrepreneurs going out to the marketplace with no clout whatsoever. Um, but uh, if you go with a group, um, there's, I don't know if there's some recent legislation or something that they're offering packages as if they were one group, uh, that would be huge. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a huge expense for me. I've got two kids and a wife and I'm spending over 20 grand a month, uh, excuse me, two grand a month, excuse me, Oof. <laughs> a few years maybe, but uh, yeah, uh, it's expensive and it'd be wonderful to have something else uh, available. Yeah, but, I, but, I think that's that's our intention is to start moving into that direction, uh, Chris, to be able to further streamline, right? That once we can get enough people and to be able to like, great, what policies are we currently selling, right? What are the, And that's how we can actually dollar validate, here's what people are really needing into it and already make a good offer that's attractive to them. Then what we'll start to do is start to say, great, now I have this pool 
And then we can go and renegotiate with carriers based upon that pool. We can start looking at like different insurance captive options that like Royal Legal Solutions would then like build the captive and then pull everybody into it. That would allow us to do other things. Uh, but the initial step of where we're at right now is I need everybody to start buying insurance from us. Because until everybody starts buying insurance from us, then I can't establish the more sophisticated systems that are going to really drive down our costs. Because the things that you were talking about here, and this might be two level of like, what's my cost of insurance versus cost of loss as I have going on, right? That's, that's a calculation. Uh, that's an important calculation. There's actually better ways to cover off on that than to say, I'm just not going to do insurance, but we need to build to a certain volume level to be able to make those costs work, right? So that's, uh, but if we do it in aggregate, then we're going to be able to, to get there. But that's going to take us 12 months to, to 18 months to be able to build to. But in the meantime, if we want to get there and we're like, cool, we're dedicated to get there as a community, I'm, and we need to sell policy, right? Because without selling policy, then there's no build to the more efficient solution that's later on. But my hope is what we currently have, that it's already good enough to be able to say like, yeah, this is a no brainer, of course, of a relationship that I want to establish and see how it could potentially make work. That's my intention anyway. Um, Jeff, did you have anything you want to chime in the conversation? I saw that you went off mute here. Oh, sorry. No, I actually sent you an email already. But yeah, on the health insurance, I mean, maybe to, to Chris's point, right? So I guess maybe six months ago, I had four different insurance agents I'm working with. And now I've got it down to two and I still, still have three, right? One for health insurance and then two for the properties that are in different states. So it's a single point of contact. It's a huge value add. Just having that relationship will be awesome with somebody like Aaron. But yeah, there's there. It, you're just it's all about reducing the number of touch points to to deal with like all these different issues. So I do have maybe somebody who might be a good health insurance person if you look to add to your team. Yeah, please uh, uh, connect me with them via email. Into it, uh, if you can, just shoot us an email out to the two of us, connect us up together. I'd love to follow up with them and and leverage through as many high quality people. Of course. Anybody that brings into the world, right? I'm, I'm only looking to like bring in like the absolute killers of whatever their specialty is because we don't have time for management, right? We only yep. have time for leadership. This guy's a rock star. I re everybody I've recommended to him just is like falling over on how thankful they are. So I love it. Thank you so much for the connection. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll be a huge help for us. As I think that was we identified here, that's the only gap. So if we can leverage through uh, another connection, um, then I bet that we'd be able to do is still have Aaron quarterback uh, the single point of contact and then him quarterback amongst either the carrier providers or outsource providers um, like your guy, Jeff. Is that how you would think that we should grow this or that's going to be the way to do it? Okay. I see you nodding there. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. I was on mute. Yeah. No, no, you're good, man. That, that's great. I'm just jealous of that mustache. God, that's a boss mustache. That is strong. That is a, <laughs> that is a man stash. No, no, I, it's, it's, this whole thing is from like when my uh, youngest brother was brought home from the hospital, my, my brother that's uh, 11 months younger than I, we were playing in the backyard, threw a metal bucket at me and I have a scar on my upper lip. So the only reason I have any facial hair is, is either that or it's a scar on the upper lip. <laughs> Pick your poison. That's it, man. You got the armor, dude. It looks fantastic. I, mean, it looks great. I love it. Um, awesome, guys. Any other thoughts here on insurance? Uh, any, any like reservations anybody's having about like scheduling a call with Aaron or emailing me rather to so that way we can set up a call over there. And anybody have any reservations about doing that that we could cover off on? Because I'd really like everybody on this call to um, if you get to get on a get on a call with us about the insurance piece and just check it out. I mean, if it's if I'm really very confident we'll be able to help you with with some part of it, but just getting your feedback into uh, into the process of the system or something like this is actually hugely helpful and beneficial for us, even if it doesn't make sense eventually for us to, to do business together. But Anthony, I saw you went off mute, Brad. What's what's up? Yeah, what's up? hey, thanks. Uh, I, I I had to tune out for to deal with something uh, in the middle, so I may have missed this. But um, if we're already a partner, uh, a customer, whatever the, um, the term specifically yeah. is, where we have um, a series LLC, you know, series built out with you guys. I'm kind of in that final production stage right now. How applicable are some of these items to us since we're kind of already in that, you know, bulletproof spectrum to be? <laughs> so are you thinking about like saying like, is um, should I switch over my insurance after I'm done setting up all of my structuring or is the question, is there, is there a different question about like, do I even need to do anything with insurance? Well, it's a combination because you've obviously touched on that, you know, this is multiple um, 
points. So obviously for the series LLC and such, that's kind of only our business stuff, but we still have vehicles that are personally owned and other insurance. Um, so yeah. do we, I guess the first question is, how much of this won't be applicable when we're in the Bulletproof series LLC structure that you guys have built out for us? Um, and then um, how would that, then secondarily, how would that, how would this apply to just personal? And I, I think you were talking about it at one point and I had to, I had to tune out, as I said. So I'm not sure if, uh, if you want to take that offline or just share it again. Oh, I, think, I think it's a great question. Uh, so the first thing is like, what's the scope of insurances? So uh, for any insurance that you have currently, uh, we should look at seeing like, can we do something that's going to be better and more efficient through a single relationship, right? And that's what Aaron's going to be able to help you with, right? So your insurances that you have now, I wouldn't say to get rid of them, right? When we talked about it before and what we, what we talked about inside Royal Legal Solutions is your insurance is... Um, is that we, a lot of people will think about asset protection as an alternative to insurance. That's not the way I think of it. The way I think of it is that I have great insurances in place that are cost efficient, i.e. what Chris is talking about, right? Yep. And that that's the most efficient protection I can buy and have in place continually because mm -hmm. it gets rid of most claims most of the time, right? right. And then right. I, hopefully an insurance company will pick it up and they handle it for me. Um, and that's great. And it's done. Right. And that's worth the cost of insurance. The reason why it's worth the cost of insurance is maybe they get rid of the claim, right? For you. Amazing. They pay out for it, a settlement. That's great. But what happens in the case that we know insurance companies are also profit seeking corporations, right? So whenever high claims come through, um, what, or if there's accidents or other types of liability that's never covered in by insurance, like any allegation of fraud from an email that you sent, uh, any allegation of breach of contract, um, Though, or that they say, hey, it's a really bad accident and you should have known of the condition that's called gross negligence. Insurance will mm -hmm. never cover those claims, right? right? And so when it's either insurance covers it, but it's not enough coverage, right? Or it's an uncovered type of claim, that's when your asset protection steps in, right? So we want to keep broad spectrum coverage in place as long mm -hmm. as it makes uh, dollars and cents, right? Per Chris's point. Yeah. But we want the asset protection in place because we actually can't fully rely on insurance to be able to cover off on all claims. And there's going to be certain limitations or other caveats in which that the insurance carrier just won't, uh, won't provide for me. Yeah. Um, and we know that our asset protection then is actually a fallback position because we want insurance to do it. Asset protection comes a fallback and we use it as a fallback because the moment my asset protection comes in play, we can hit up Scott. Scott will do a great job at being able to be really aggressive on getting the claim to get dropped because we have anonymity structures in place. They're going to have all kinds of problems serving the lawsuits because they can't find me and they have to serve me personally because I'm the trustee. And that's what, mm -hmm. so it's a hell of a time trying to find me in the mountains or wherever I'm at for them to even serve the lawsuit. But even in that case scenario, if, if we actually, if they are successful in serving me, then we have to start paying local attorneys that are going to be actually representing the court. And that's a $5,000 minimum. Right. So that's why it's a fallback because we have extra protections in place, but still we might get caught with a bill. Right. And then we might have big liability. So it's, it's about, it's about stacking the efficiencies into it. So what I would say, Anthony, is hundred percent, get, get into the meeting with Aaron. Let's start talking about what are the full scopes of insurance that you have. Anybody at any time can work with us on their insurance, whether we're haven't worked with you at all inside Royal Legal Solutions, or if you have other asset protection stuff set up, or you're not even intending to put in asset protection or anything else in place, that's fine. You don't need to do it, or you can have everything in place, or you cannot have anything in place. The insurance is its own caveat. It's its own system of protection, right? That happens first at the very first things that we should be covering off Stage on. Stage one. Yeah, got it. Cool. Thanks for that explanation, Scott. If I could add on to that, Scott, too, is that, you know, if you don't have the insurance portion, even if you were bulletproof, you still got to pay yeah. for the lawyers to cover you. And if it's a big enough claim, uh, the insurance company is going to pay for the lawyers to protect you. So that's one expense that you don't have to pay for, uh, which you would, because you can't just ignore it. You right. know? <laughs> of course. That's right. Yeah. So it's at the end of the day, it's like attorney's fees get into the mix here too, right? 
Um, and so we, that's why we want to have those insurance because we want to give them lots of opportunities for us to try to convince them that they need to cover the claim and then pick up the attorney's fees and handle it all with their in-house counsel. Right, so, right. It's the multiple layers of protection. You, you got to do it. And, and for those of you out there who think, well, I don't have that much assets. I don't need to worry about this. Do you want your wages garnished for the rest of your life? Yeah. You know? Or Yeah. You know? it, and it uh, like will also impact your credit scores too, right? So now all of a sudden it's your access to capital that gets hit. Um, as well too. So there's lots of, lots of uh, bad, nasty stuff that happens that um, it doesn't, that you should just factor into your business model, right? Of here's my cost of doing business as I need to have this kind of protection. Otherwise what you're doing is you're, you're going on hopium, right? It's I'm going to hope nothing bad is going to happen. Well, well, I mean, you grow big enough. It's not if it's when you're yeah, going to get sued. You will get sued and it has to be just time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, over like the course of investor time, it's almost guaranteed, right? I mean, that it is. is. I mean, we live in a very litigious society, and you're going to get sued. And I mean, I've been sued a couple times. Both were totally frivolous. Um, I won, but I lost because they just put bankruptcy. So, uh, but it's just look. That's just a part of owning a lot of assets and being a target. Yeah, even like a few assets and making sure you don't have big step backs along the way, right? So I. I and that's, this is the key piece, right? What, what Chris is hitting on, just to underscore before we wrap for the day, is that there is appropriate level for each person, right? You don't think that like when you come in that we have to, have, everything has to be done all at the beginning, right? No, what's important is, is you understand the intention like we talked about in the beginning of the call. Where am I headed? What are the appropriate steps I need to take now, right? That's gonna help me build to the endpoint. But I don't need to go build everything for the endpoint. And then very beginning, right? And that's what you call efficient builds. That's the way you need to start thinking as an investor or as an entrepreneur to be able to tack the ship in the right direction. It's not about building the best ship. It's about like, no, nah, I need a ship that runs, that's running in the right direction. And the way you do that is thinking, building with the end in mind, partnering with professionals or experts that are in that area that can cover off on holistic types of problems. So that way you ensure everything integrates and that it's going to scale appropriately incrementally over time without ever having to go back and rebuild anything. Because rebuilding is usually time and cost, um, uh, usually a time suck and very cost inefficient. So that's my big pitch, guys, for insurance for today. Right. So um, everybody go uh, send me an email right now to Scott at Royal Legal Solutions dot com. Uh, tell me like, hey, I want to meet with you about insurance um, and we'll go ahead and get that onto the calendar. My team will get those emails and then work on getting you scheduled and with uh, me and Aaron. Um, so just go to Scott at Royal Legal Solution or email me at Scott at Royal Legal Solutions dot com. Uh, and we will go ahead and work on getting you scheduled in and start having those conversations with you guys. Um, any other last points that we want to cover off on that anybody has uh, before we go that's um, like about what are the next steps and what we could expect in terms of the next steps of like how to connect or any what's going to happen in that meeting? Hey, Scott, I got a quick question. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, thanks for the, the presentation, uh, Aaron, and for you, Scott. Uh, but um, what is the, and the immediate, what coverage areas do we have? What regions? We have we have everything uh, besides health insurance right now. And we have all of the certifications that we need uh, to be able to sell those lines of insurance. So what's gonna well, the way we're going to build the company is that after you get your initial carrier lines set, mm -hmm. um, that we're able to then um, go into the new states by doing the reciprocity submissions. So we have the backing and the financial backing of Royal Legal Solutions to do that on a um, ad hoc basis. So what will happen is, Charlie, is when you come in to your meeting there with Aaron, we come in and say, cool, we, we do the needs analysis. We see what are going to be the appropriate policies. We start to quote those out, right? Say, cool, does right. that make sense, Charlie? Cool, we're going to move forward. Great. Now Aaron goes back in with like the fulfillment team and says, cool, well, where what additional pieces do we need to do to execute on this for Charlie? Well, we actually need to go get, uh, go get the registration for liability policies in Hawaii. Great. So that gets kicked off to a staff member to go ahead and get that. And so we're just going to build our credentialing on an as needed basis for whoever comes in. Um, there's there's very small limitations that exist on our ability to do that, uh, but Aaron will be able to cover off on that inside of your meeting if there's anything that we can't do um, uh, because of a particular state or a particular insurance line, but I know those are extremely limited. So um, in the initial phases of this, right, the way that we're trying to do this and the way to be able to make everything as affordable as possible is to just build the plane while we're flying it, right? That we have all the right. foundation set, but if we need to get in different states, we're just going to go register for those states as we need to. 
Okay. Awesome. And my understanding Thank here, Aaron, too, is that that's actually a really efficient and fast process, right, to be able to get registered because of the reciprocity pieces are actually really actually quite simple. They're just money. So money issues are things we can solve, right, because we have the backing of Royal Legal Solutions for Royal Insurance. Is that fair to say, Aaron? Anything else to add to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, if, if we're not if we're not already licensed to be able to do business or have that set up, um, it's it's two or three days at the maximum, and um, and we'll be able to help you in any way that you need with that insurance portion. So, so Chris, like for your piece, right? Or if anybody else is there, it's like, hey, I'm looking for 24 hour turn times, right? What we'd say is, well, cool. Then tell us where you plan on doing business. We'll go ahead and go ahead and prospectively get those uh, licensures away. Right? Because if you're like, you need it in 24 hours, then we'll be we're happy to be proactive on that front of it. Right. Not all the time. Not even most of the time. Uh, but just there's just times when it, you need it to be rushed through. And honestly, the majority of my coverage is going to be rental properties, which we can take our time with. It's it's those fix and flips where you know that seller is really antsy and they only want a cash buyer, and you're going to lose out if you don't close quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So if we know what those are prospectively, then let's handle on a case by case basis. We can also start working with you, Chris, inside your meeting about like, you know, what is, what is the relative value about being able to have that in all 50 States? And maybe we just plug down the money and just go ahead and get registered in all the States for those things that you're going to be important to you. Cause it's like, great. As long as we know we're getting the money on the policy, I'm happy to take on the operational expense because we're going to take on the operational expense at some point. So, but it's the thing is I don't want to establish operational expenses until I know that I'm actually going to be helping somebody because otherwise I'm just getting licensures for, for fun. And that actually doesn't end up on his trophies on my wall. So I'm not in all 50 States. I would go crazy. I got hubs only four. Yeah, there you go. Or uh, five if you include where I live, but I, but I don't invest, which is California. But yeah, and, I, and that's true for anybody, right? We're using Chris as an example, but I'm, I'm just using this as a way of like dialogue of like, what's the flexibility of what we're, I'm willing to do and what Aaron's willing to do to be able to help create this, create this community, create this environment to create this insurance piece to help support you guys. Um, cool. Any, any last questions here, guys? I know we're, we're over by uh, a little bit of time here. Um, Great. So anything else that comes up for you guys, if you end up with another question in your mind um, uh, or if you're saying, hey, great, I'd, I'd be happy to support Aaron and Scott with going into a meeting and talking about my insurance because those conversations are super helpful for us. Even if you're thinking like it's not going to be, it might not be for me, um, I would please ask that you please email me um, at scott at royallegalsolutions.com and help us with getting into a meeting because we need the reps about looking at all of these different cases to be able to dial in on um, what exactly is the, the what exactly is going to be the most uh, sought after type of policies and uh, coverages that are going to make the most sense for everybody? And the advantage of doing that too is that once we can get that set, then we're going to be able to know we're going to be able to do proactive recommendations for everybody about what's current. We have about two thousand clients over the last you know number of years, right? That we're working with, but uh, I don't have a database of what everybody's insurance coverages are, so we need to build that database now. Right. And that's what we're going to be doing together. So eventually we'll be able to get to a place where we'll be able to say the data will drive telling us what policies and what the co appropriate coverages are going to be relative to a number of other factors. But another little future state piece. In the meantime, hey, get into meetings. Email Scott, me great system. job. Really appreciate it. I'm excited. I've already sent you an email. Uh, figure this thing out and then move on to lending because I love that. If you guys would do that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we have. We have insurance that's coming up here too. And I'll also be telling you about a fund that we're starting that's a commodities-based fund uh, that's gonna be coming online here. Um, just to tease it out for you, that's gonna be next session coming up with Ron. You guys Something to have, invest in, you mean? Yep, to invest in. We're, and we're gonna we're gonna set this fund up in a way that is going to be allowing a safe haven or a safe, an escape hatch essentially for real estate investors who are in the belief system of like, hey, a lot of my real estate portfolio has gone up a ton in value. I think if there's a market correction, all of my paper gains are going to get lost. So how can I exit some of my real estate, not pay capital gains on it and get it into some commodities-based play that will operate just like real estate with a safe asset class, but it will also cash flow. It's so, going to be DST-based where you can you're way ahead of one into it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's the way that it's going to be organized and to do that. So I look forward to that one. Yeah, that'll be coming you up. Do. Ron. Yeah, it looks like I know a lot of people are going to be into it, into it. I've been working on it behind the scenes for about the last six months, uh, putting this together. I've actually ran my own money through it to vet it out. Um, 
uh, to be able to ensure that it was going to have the operational effectiveness I was looking for. Um, and my goal and my intention there is to be able to offer to everybody uh, exactly what I did and, and, and trade side by side with me, right, uh, of here's what we're going to do. So uh, you can take advantage of everything I'm doing, right? Might not be right. I don't claim to be like a guru of like, I know everything and that it's perfect, but um, I got some good team and, uh, and it's what I'm doing. So if it, if you buy into it, then you'll know that at least it, we're all going down together if we're going down. But my expectation is actually that this is going to be a place that I'm doing it to ensure off of a lot of risk. Cause I feel like the future is pretty risky right now into it. And I would, I'm taking profits off the table where it makes sense to do so. And then reallocating that. Um, so anyway, stay in touch with that for the next meeting with Ron. Email me at Scott at Royal Legal Solutions to step with insurance meeting. Love you guys. Take care. Have a great and awesome week and see you next week.